and I'm back. Okay, this one is just absolutely a little ridiculous. Uh, I hesitated buying it, but... I think it's brilliant. And it feels good to have that done. I'm feeling hopeful. Oh, I'm feeling hopeful. Because I do think there's something about Henry. Is it very cool? Boys, you're gonna have to. Boys, you're, boys, you're gonna have to work hard when you're older. Making a salad to bring. So yeah. Now she's gonna have tacos. So basically, it'll just be. Sometimes we eat standing up. And away we go with vlog number one seven seven five. You just were a little fly on the wall in the kitchen, all right, us living life. That's part of my strategy with daily vlogging. I'll come back to that in a minute. Today, we're gonna talk about uh, vlogging gear, all right, this camera. We're gonna unbox boxes. I'm gonna break down different scenes within my style of vlogging and what goes into my thought process behind different styles, okay? And then we're also gonna, I'm gonna give you, oh yeah, I'm gonna answer your questions and then give you my top 10 uh, credo or belief behind how I uh, approach daily vlogging. And tip number one, in case you're uh, unable to watch the entire vlog, here we go, all right? Without the light, with the light. Without the light, with the light. Always try, if you can, to use a light in the background to give depth to your shot. It makes such a difference. All right, leaving it there right now. Let's dive in first to your questions from two days ago where I put the cutie out there all about what questions do you have for me about daily vlogging and this YouTube channel? Over 200 comments, no way I could answer all of them. So here we go. In no particular order, let's just dive in. Mitchell asked, how did you learn how to put up YouTube videos if you are not a tech guy? Mitchell, great question. First of all, uh, my approach to daily vlogging is that you, you should, <laughs> I don't wanna say you should not be a tech guy, but my approach is always story driven, okay? And that's I think part of the reason why the channel keeps growing and growing is because I am always striving to tell a story. I'm not saying I do it every single day, but that's one of my goals, okay? So Mitchell, the technical side of YouTube, uh, you guys know. I, I, I loathe technology sometimes, and I'm not good at it, frankly. I, the details of technology is not my strong point. I'm more of that pie-in-the-sky, story-driven kind of guy. All right, so Mitchell, great question. I love it. Moving on. And I forgot to write down the name for this one. How many hours does a vlog take to edit? Two to five hours, okay? Two to five. This one will probably take three, but that does not include how long does it take to upload. That's another, you know, 45 minutes. It just, oh, uh, so it adds up very, very quickly. Uh, let's see, Scott asks, I would like to hear more about how you edit. What techniques do you use and how you manage your footage storage? So Scott, again, I am not, I'm not good at managing my storage. At some point, I will hopefully have some help where someone can, um, first of all, I need an office, okay? I don't have an office, I work out of my house. I don't have room for, uh, I don't even know what they're call basically called, like stacks of hard drives. Anyway, it's just beyond me. Someday I'll have an office where somebody can organize the footage for me. Uh, but what else did you ask? Oh yeah, what techniques do you use? fly on the wall. I'll explain what I mean about that here in a minute. Scott, good question. What gear do I use when I run? Matt, I'll come back to that in a minute in more detail, but I'll just say right now, usually GoPro 8 or 9. Okay, there you go. And I know I'm going quick, but this vlog is going to be long. Have you ever woken up and not feel like uh, filming? And if so, how often? Sam, great question. I would say early in the vlog, so the first, so this, I've been going almost for five years. The first two to two and a half years, I probably woke up twice a month and I was like, I just don't feel like filming today, okay? Now, uh, I cannot think of the last time I did not wake up and think, oh, it would be really nice not to have to make a vlog today. There, yeah, oh man, it's, there are moments in the middle of the day, but as far as waking up, like I'm always usually excited. Okay, maybe once a quarter, if I had to put a number on it. There you go, Sam. Thank you for the question. And then last but not least from Fred, how do you get the first video noticed on a new channel? Is it just upload and cross your fingers or is there a way to push the content when no one knows about it from Fred? Fred, oh man, this is, 
this is this is a big question so my recommendation if you want to start a YouTube channel and start to gain some traction you need to have a theme to your channel it helps to have a little bit of branding behind your channel and um, and then it's obviously not just the first video you need in fact that's not a bad idea is to have 10 videos done before you upload any of them and then you get into a rhythm where you just tell your audience I'm gonna upload a new video once a week for the next 10 weeks but you have 10 videos already done and then in those 10 weeks you're working on the next 10 weeks of videos okay so that way huh consistency over perfection that's one of my biggest tips on YouTube consistency over perfection oh huge topic Fred huge topic I love it okay here we go so now we're gonna do a little scene breakdown this was a scene from maybe two days ago I think it was the IRS the Internal Revenue Service blog I'll try to remember remember to link to it there's another tip okay if you want your channel to grow link to old videos YouTube sees that just so you all know when you click on those cards the algorithm knows that all right that's a that's that's a little tip of the day okay so there you go upper right hand corner to the Internal Revenue Service so this was the opening scene of the vlog I think it's about seven seconds and this is my SFX tip what does that stand for sound effects okay what am I doing I'm making my bed okay what do I I used to say this a lot more I strive on this YouTube channel to make the ordinary extraordinary how do you make your bed uh, something very ordinary that most of us do every single day calling you out no just kidding um, is that you use angles quick cuts and yes in this seven second sequence actually let me just roll it so you know what I'm talking about there you go all right that what was that seven seconds that the the bed the the sheets moving the the comforter moving that was sound effects everybody okay you don't even know it's happening half the time on the channel where I'm adding sound effects to a scene okay and it's uh, well I, okay I'm gonna save it uh, I'll save that for later anyway that was the first scene I wanted to break down here's another one you all know I'm pretty big on transitions whether it's opening the uh, the, the PO box at the uh, post office or this was again I think this was two days ago a quick little uh, transition okay I'm a big believer in uh, logical transitions or transitions that are um, eye-catching okay I'll just put it that way because I want to save it for later so uh, here's a transition from my car uh, back to the house thank you awesome have a good one five years in the making so that's my transition scene I'm a big fan of transitions and it just spices the daily vlog up a little bit and again a lot of times you don't even realize it's happening but it is happening if you pay very close attention all right next scene to break down I actually filmed this morning uh, it was an oatmeal morning at the Demore household and so this one is lighting 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 I'm setting up the shot I, I actually moved the oatmeal pot into the sunlight okay and then I was gonna use the tripod but I ended up using yes the uh, kitchen bowl the bowl the mixing bowl is that what it's called uh, I cannot tell you how often I use a mixing bowl as my tripod in the house I actually used to oh, that's a story for another day I use the mixing bowl a lot so here I am putting the camera onto the mixing bowl I use the uh, lens cap from the camera to actually from this camera to prop the lens up just a little bit and then th what it, this shot is backlit with the natural sunlight coming in through the window and I knew this is how long I've been vlogging everybody I know <laughs> depending on the season depending on the season spring summer fall winter I know wh exactly what time the sun is gonna peek through that window in my kitchen because I've filmed there so many that's how crazy and like experience you will develop if you are consistent in your production process okay so this is uh, I love backlighting I love steam and smoke you guys know that it adds so so much 
to the shot, very cinematic. It's, again, a lot of times you don't even know what's happening. I often, also when I'm sitting right here in the morning, I'll use this lamp as a backlight and I'm drinking the coffee at like five in the morning and the steam off the coffee is in the shot, okay? So lighting, 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 lighting. Last but not least, another scene that I'm gonna break down at the end of this vlog. It's a long scene, it's six minutes. So I am gonna break it down for you in its entirety at the end of this vlog. I'll actually put a timestamp on the screen right now. So if you wanna jump ahead to this timestamp, uh, that will take you to where I'm, it's, it's like a six minute scene, it's the uh, mountain scene. So it's a mountain running scene, okay? So if you wanna jump ahead, you can do that right there. All right, now let's jump into my vlogging beliefs, my credo behind why, frankly, um, oh man, why I think this channel is growing. And some of it's because of me, but a lot of it is because of you out there watching every single day. And I appreciate it. All right, everyone. So here we go. Number one, story wins in the long run. What do I mean? This channel, and not always, but most often is story driven. Okay. Oh, I'm just gonna leave it there because I've got 10 to get through. Story, story, story. I'll come back to that in a minute as well in more detail. Number two, zig when they zag. When other running YouTube channels are doing this direction, I'm trying to go this direction. Make yourself different. Do different stuff. Do unique stuff on your channel, okay? Zig. Uh, no, yeah, Z no, Z zag when they zig. Well, what? <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. Number three, eye candy. Make it hard to click away, like the smoke shots or the steam shots. Make it hot, make eye candy for your viewers. Make the shots engaging to watch, all right? That's number three. Number four, evoke emotion often, okay? I like to do it in different ways. Um, actually, the, the mountain running scene here in a minute that I'm gonna break down, very driven emotionally uh, for a lot of different reasons, but I would say one of the main reasons was because of the music for the day. So many people asked me what song was in that uh, clip, okay? So anyway, evoke emotion often. Number five, fly on the wall. I often do not see this on, frankly, a lot of channels. I like to set up the camera and just hit record and walk away. And this is gonna connect to the gear that I use as well, and I'm gonna break that down in a second. Um, I like to, so fly on the wall, what do I mean? I want all of you out there to be a fly on the wall to our life, all right? We're just eating, like for a second ago, eating lunch in the kitchen, standing up, okay? We're just in there, and you guys are a fly on the wall watching what we're doing. I think that's very powerful, where you're not talking to the camera. Oh, anyway, fly on the wall. I love, love, love doing that. Uh, consistency over perfection. I think I already mentioned that. Always my rule of thumb. Perfection is, uh, I say, it's not a good thing to strive for on YouTube. Other platforms, maybe not on YouTube. Rather, consistency, consistency, consistency. It's also what I call massaging the algorithm, okay? YouTube, yes, massaging the algorithm. All right, moving on, number six, uh, or number seven. Advance the plot regularly, all right? So that overarching plot or story of this channel, it is, it's running, okay? Well, it's running, but it's also bigger goals that I keep dropping hints at. For example, one of them being my lifelong dream to qualify for the US Olympic Marathon Trials, okay? Or like last year, winning the Pikes Peak Marathon. No one in sight! Seth, you are the man. Right. Yeah, get it, get nice it. Work, brother. brother, my brand, brother, my brand. Yeah. That was an overarching plot line that was developing for two years on this channel, okay? So keep in mind those overarching bigger plot lines that you don't have to talk about often. Maybe once a week, twice a month um, is, is frankly all you need to to keep the plot moving forward. Number eight, um, audience should become your friend or dare I say, your family. That's right, down in the comments, reach out to your audience, your audience, AKA the YouTube family, all right? Be there for them, all right? That's number eight. Number nine, remember the lens. Oh, this is a big one and it connects to number eight. This lens, I'm not looking at a lens, I'm looking at people. Do you know that? I learned that a long time ago when 
Um, you know, a lot of people ask me, like, do I get, um, not nervous, but what do they say? Do I get uh, uh, anxious, like v vlogging in, in public, like at airports or in a grocery store? And I don't. And you know why? It's because I'm not talking to a camera. I'm talking to you out there. That's easy. All right. So that's number nine. There you go. Number 10. Whoo. Really not, not enjoy, really enjoy the process. If you don't enjoy the process of video production and storytelling, it's going to be very hard. It's just, and I learned that early on. I was, yeah, I just learned it early on in five years ago. Like I actually enjoyed making the daily vlog or else I would have quit a long time ago. All right. So really enjoy the process is number 10. There you go. All right. Jumping on to my vlogging gear. Here we go. I know this is a big reason why a lot of you are watching. And again, I'm not the technical guy, uh, but I'll do my best to list all the vlogging gear and show it to you on camera. And oh yeah, I always say I would recommend using, if you're going to start a YouTube channel or you're, you want to improve your YouTube channel and you're, you're just struggling with your gear, start with your phone. Phones are amazing these days. You can edit now on your phones. I don't do that, but you can do that now so that you don't invest a ton of money into gear. Gear. Um, start on your phone and see if you enjoy the process, okay? So I would start there, but I have a 1D Mark II. I don't recommend this camera. I started with this camera, everybody, because I was more into uh, filmmaking before I was a YouTuber, okay? So just wanted to put that out there right now. So Canon 1D Mark II, and then a 24 to 70 2.8 lens. That's this one, which has been dropped how many times? I can't even remember, and it's still plugging away. That's why I love Canon, personally. I think their, their gear is built like a tank, okay? So Canon, uh, for the lens, a Sennheiser Lavalier EW100 wireless microphone. So that's what's up here on top. And so in order for me to be untethered yeah, yeah, to yeah. the camera so that I can be walk around my house and talk to you guys and I can be uh, create that fly on the wall effect, I have a mic right here, which hopefully is picking me up okay today. So sometimes I realize it doesn't sound good or the camera, um, you know, sometimes the, the jacket is rustling. So that can be an issue. But anyway, my Sennheiser mic is right here. You can probably hear me touching it right now. So this allows me the flexibility to walk around, to move all around the shot without, uh, again, being tethered and locked down to the camera. Okay, so that's why I use a lavalier mic rather than a shotgun mic. Now, this is a little shotgun mic, and actually, all right, let's dive into it. This is the Rode Video Micro, um, so Rode, R-O-D-E, and then this is the new camera, the Canon M6 Mark II. This will be the camera that I use more so for out and about, while this uh, uh, 1D will be more so for the studio and here at the house, all right? Makes sense? So moving on to what I use when I'm actually running, I'll, I have the GoPro 7, 8, 9, I would recommend the GoPro 9 for cold conditions, um, but I use the GoPro 8 and 7 for more mountain running because they're actually significantly lighter, all right, the set, especially the 7. Um, and then the 8 is the, is the GoPro that I use for the feet shot with a gimbal, and it's the Feutech WG2X combined with a longer selfie stick off of Amazon. I wish I could tell you what stick it is off of Amazon, but I have no clue what it is. So it's the Feutech WG2X is the uh, the gimbal that I use, or yeah, the yeah, I'll just call it the gimbal. All right, again, these things, these things. Uh, moving on to the drone, I have the DJI, DJI Mini 2, okay, DJI Mini 2. And then Final Cut Pro X for my editing software, which I think is perfect because it's simple and quick. A lot of people use Adobe, and that's great. I think Adobe is great for filmmaking, but for YouTube, where again, perfection is not my goal, I think Final Cut Pro X is fine, okay? In fact, I think you can do a lot with Final Cut Pro X. And again, story, story, story over editing software. Um, it's all about the story. And I'm realizing I forgot scissors, hold on. And I'm back. Okay, this one is just absolutely a little ridiculous. Uh, I hesitated buying it. Can anybody guess what this is going to be? All right, so, at the end of the day, what this is gonna allow me to do is mount a camera 
on the outside of my car with suction cups. Be a little more expeditious here. All right, moving on. Oh yeah, this is actually crazy. So this is another scale to weigh shoes, okay? Another scale to weigh shoes. Again, I just wanna make sure I'm putting out, so this is connected to the vlog, to make sure I'm putting out accurate numbers for all of you. Uh -huh. Backup microphone, okay? This is the Video Mic Pro. I have to fix or replace a lot of my vlogging gear every two years, okay? Like microphones, they break, lenses break, um, memory cards break, batteries wear out. It's great when you are using it every single day. So, Video Mic Pro, there you go. Let's see, I'm actually gonna wait on this one. I know it's in here, it's actually not a piece. You'll, I'll open this up for you later. All right, moving on, let's see, oh my, oh yeah. Wait, let's do this one first, hold on. Oh yeah, so cool, so cool. It's basically a tripod for low angle shots shooting up. So I'm gonna place this on the ground to hold by this camera or the other camera to get those really low shots uh, like out on the trails or when I go out and film races. It's called the platypod. This one is cool too, okay? And again, it took me five years before I felt like I could buy this stuff, all right? So it just doesn't happen overnight. And pretty cool box. Well, okay, I'm gonna have to open it up later. Basically, it connects to your tripod and then it allows you to uh, get overhead shots for like gear reviews or for unboxing videos. So it ba basically the camera will be connected here, looking straight down onto a shoebox, for example, but I can't get it open right now. I don't wanna break it. So that's called the Edel Crone. Okay, there you go. Unbelievable. Let's break down the mountain scene. That's right. This was a vlog shot. Um, I don't even know. I think about, uh, well, there it is. December 17th, 2020. Okay. And uh, again, this is a long vlog. I'll get you, did I get you the question of the day? I'll get you the question of the day in one minute. Um, but I just want to walk you through step by step what is going through my mind as I'm uh, creating a vlog, a beautiful mountain cinematic vlog, running vlog for you. Okay, let's hit play. All right, so I'm turning off my light. You know, I, and that was the transition. The light turn off was the transition. There's some bokeh shots with the stoplights. I set the camera up ahead of time and then drove by. All right, and just that bokeh shots where there's a lot of things out of focus. All right, and again, setting up the camera and then driving by. I added the uh, wind sound effect here. All right, and then here's the sunrise. I love using that. Oh man, so using the headlights of the semi trucks and the snow plow. All right, so you can, you're probably picking up on, on a theme. I'm a big fan of using the, the light around me, whether it's a headlight or a, a house lamp, whatever the case may be. Of course, your classic drone with the sunrise, just to give the, the mood of the setting of the little town up in the mountains. All right, a little transition there to the snowstorm. We're getting higher into the mountains. That's what the representation of the drone going up in elevation is right here in this shot. All right, and that's the shoe I'm running in today. I always try and film that. And then the elevation that I'm at, okay. Almost a starting point location for the run. Um, since this is a altitude training type of vlog. All right, 10 degrees. You guys see me do that, film that often. Again, I know some people live in warm places and so they don't see snow. So this is a big deal for them to kind of see a mountain winter vlog. It's tiring, it hurts, but you gotta get it done. All right, getting the gear ready. That's a vest, a raid light vest that I use to carry all the gear. Okay, oh, love this shot, going up the trees. Um, yeah, and this is the song that I think a lot of people liked. Again, remember to evoke emotion, maybe not every single day on your channel, but often evoke that emotion. And that's what this song does, along with this shot, actually. All right, the crunching of the snow, a little sound effect for you all. All right, that big setting shot with big mountain, open open wide mountain shot. All right, where am I at? Quandary Peak. I always like to film the signs just because a lot of people don't know where I'm at when I'm out there filming. All right, getting up the mountain. So I set the camera up ahead of time, you know, 
run back down the trail, run past the camera, go back and get the camera, and then continue running. That's how it works. Um, this is a, a drone shot that I actually filmed after the run, uh, once I got back down. All right, once again, running past the camera. How many extra miles do I run setting up that camera? Lots and lots. So this is a snow drift, which actually slowed me down a lot, and I decided to do some push-ups, you know, about halfway up, um, you know, just to change it up. And notice the music stopped. I like to stop the music every now and then just to give that natural setting noise, okay? And then it kicks back in. Again, it's changing the emotions of the moment. That's what I'm doing here with cutting, boom, music is back, okay? And it's windy out and it's cold and it's just you're evoking emotions. Okay, a little slow motion for you there. It's getting harder, the snow is getting deeper. It's pretty rough, it was a hard day. Yeah, I didn't realize it was gonna be so snowy up there. Um, so, and then that sound effect with the wind, okay, you can hear that there. And notice I go right past the camera the whole way. All right, and then I did carry the drone up with me on this day, the DG, DJI Mini 2. And just to get this, basically, I think I only filmed once, maybe twice, up on the mountain. Uh, but it just adds so, so much to the overall sequence. All right, we're getting close to the turnaround point. Actually, this is it. So usually I do a check-in when I'm stopping or turning around, and I talk to the camera. <laughs> so just working hard up here, and it was very cold. But this gives you a sense of uh, how windy it was, you know, the snow blowing through. You can see the gear that I'm carrying on my raid light vest. So that's good. Um, oh man, it was a crazy day. But again, just kind of walking you through, you know, the camera's just sitting on the ground right now. It's not on a tripod, you know, just sitting on the ground, nothing special. And then I walk, or, you know, walk off screen, that's also key. And then I go back and get the camera. All right, and then by the end, the sun is starting to come out. Almost hit a tree right there with the drone. <laughs> and then I basically, I think, got one or two shots on the way down just to show like I made it off the mountain and it was a great run. And um, I'm just holding the GoPro at this point with my hand, the GoPro 9. That's how impressive the GoPro 9 is. But you saw that transition there. Now I'm done with the mountain. I just, boom, quick transition to driving because the end goal for the day was Leadville. And here we are in Leadville, going down the main street with a drone. Again, just giving you the setting of where I ended up for the day. So good old Leadville. Again, song cuts out, but there's still some ambient noise. And then into the motel. Sense of um, what I do, what's going through my brain when I'm out there filming, and also as I'm editing. It's frankly, a lot of it does come down to the editing, all right? Another tip of the day, uh, always overshoot, meaning always get too much clips to work with, all right? That's always a, a rule of thumb for you. So here we go, question of the day. What jumps out at you with respect to this daily running vlog? It could be a, a positive or a negative. I don't, you know, constructive feedback is good as well. Uh, I'm not saying I'm perfect or an expert by any means, but that's the question of the day. What jumps, and just as I'm talking right now, the sun is bearing down on me. So the sun is moving, and um, I know that this shot is probably going to be a little overexposed. Like, that's just part of the process of video production and learning how to produce a daily vlog is learning how to use lighting and, like, my camera is in manual. I never shoot auto, always manual, and so it's not gonna adjust automatically to the fact that the sun is hitting my face right now in a big, big way. So, onward and upward. Thanks for tuning in, that was fun. Hope you learned something. Oh man, okay, we are gonna toss it to, um, we'll toss it to that mountain vlog. We'll toss it to the mountain vlog, right here, right here, right here. All right, see beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.